Let's uh, touch on Vancouver, St. Louis here quickly. Um, I think the one thing that concerns me about St. Louis, um, yes, they're the champs, but they allowed two goals within the last minute in two of these round robin games. Um, you could take that for what you will. Um, you can take that as preseason. You can take that that this is no big deal. Um, but for a team that we have prided ourselves as loving defensively, that is a that is an interesting sign that I I, I can't shake out of my head. Oh, uh, I was listening to Kevin Woodley, uh, former guest of this podcast, on uh, on ten forty this morning, and he talked about how. Uh, all the underlying stats say that St. Louis are not a good defensive def- uh, team. And they, they give up way too many chances uh, in the middle of the ice, uh, in, in high-scoring high, high scoring chance off opportunities. And the Canucks thrived in, 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 do, in creating opportunities down, uh, in, in the slot area versus the Wild. Outside of the first game where they were playing all way too perimeter, they moved, it, they moved the game inside. Uh, real easily uh, after that. And uh, if they can do that, they have a chance at uh, at uh, pulling a big upset here. Yeah. Um, it, I, I don't know. I don't know if they were, uh, if uh, St. Louis was playing at their top level. Uh, I didn't want, I, I honestly didn't watch a single game that they played in the qualifying series in the round robin, uh, but they, uh, they have potential to really, really lay it on thick. Uh, with the amount of depth they have down their lineup, uh, one the, like like I said last podcast, uh, looking down the middle, you have Shen, O'Reilly, Robert Thomas, and Oscar Sundqvist, and uh, j- just uh, if if anything, I feel like their depth is going to shine through. And uh, yes, defensively they they haven't really. Uh, been the defensive uh, team that they were, and I think one of the big reasons also is because they're li- um, they're, they're missing Jay Bolmeister. Um, thankfully, he is uh, he's healthy and uh, he's he's recovering well. Uh, but he that's a massive loss on that blue line, and that could be um, one of the reasons why uh, they if they don't get uh, past the Canucks, uh, missing him is going to be huge. And um, Jordan Bittington, I he hasn't really. He he was he did very well this year, um, but he he kind of took a bit of a step back in his uh, in his goaltending uh, compared to the, the massive run they went on last year. Uh, again, going back to what I listened to with Kevin Woodley, he talks about the underlying stats that he has access to um, that make that that show that uh, Markstrom had one of the best seasons. Bennington wasn't far behind um, in terms of that, and that's at that point. Um, the thing with the St. Louis, can they turn it on? That's the big question with St. Louis is can they turn it on? Because you look at um, Boston and St. Louis, the two conference leaders um, going in, going at, at the pause uh, ended up, um, ended up finishing fourth in their, in, in the round Robins and, uh, and get uh, tough, tough matchups in the first round. So um, I, I, I think the, 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 there is a spot, there is a way there, there is um a potential upset here. I do think that the Canucks can, can take it to St. Louis if they play at the top of their game. They, they went to uh, two Oh and one versus uh, the, the blues in the regular season. I know you can't really get, look at that too much at this point. It's a completely different ball game. Um, the Rangers were undefeated versus the hurricanes in the regular season and they got swept. So you can't really look at that, but I think the Canucks match up well, uh, especially with, with, with Brandon Sutter, Playing at the way he the way he's playing with that third line that is going to be key. If that third line can continue to be a, um, a effective uh, grind them out line, and I, I do think that they can uh, they they can cause a lot of trouble for the St. Louis Blues and potentially uh, pull an upset. Either way, I love this matchup for the Canucks long term. I think that you learn that win win or lose, they're going to learn a lot in this series about how to win it in the playoffs. And that's going to be huge. Um, I, and that's what we wanted. That's what we as Canucks fans have wanted all season was them for to get into the playoffs and learn how to learn how to play in the playoffs. I think they got a little, they, they were able to dip their toe a little bit with Minnesota. Who's a little se- who are seasoned in, in how to play in playoff games. Um, they're, they're a very experienced team in that aspect, but Stepping up to the St. Louis Blues is potentially a a, a, a bigger 
a much bigger step than uh, they might be ready for, but you never know. You, Quinn Hughes, X factor. But if he plays like he did versus Minnesota, watch out. There, he took over the game at times, and just I, I've I've lost ways to actually explain how much I enjoy watching him play and how good he is. Like he just he changes the game better, like more than I've ever seen any other player in the last since like make, like from the blue line in a long time like no one controls the game like like uh like quinn hughes does not even mccarr like as good as mccarr is he's second fiddle to mckinnon quinn hughes runs the show in vancouver to me the three key things for vancouver that i think need to happen is markstrom needs to be needs to step up he needs to be better um they need uh, we're going to point to Tyler Myers, but I think overall discipline is going to have to be a key thing in because I think special teams is going to be a factor. Um, and because uh, power plays, penalty kills, all that, that is going to be such a huge factor. We've, we've talked about officiating at nauseum and we, but this is going to be it. We don't know what it's going to be like. So, like specifically Tyler Myers, I think he knows he needs to be better, but the entire team as well needs to be careful with their penalties. Um, this is a series that I think Jake Vertanen needs to step up. I think that one of the key matchups is the Canuck wingers versus that Blues defense. I think the Canucks size, I think, creates some interesting opportunities for them. If they can play physical, I think it allows their skill, their Pedersons and their Hughes to do their things. I think this is a series that Jake Vertanen needs to make a step up. If 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 you are a Jake Vertanen fan, this is a series we need to see that what Jake Vertanen is really about. Because if he is what you say he is, I believe that the Vancouver Canucks can actually win this series. I, I really do. Uh, but if not, I just I think that the Blues are going to play a heavy, boring, and I there's going to be people tweeting how dull this is. Um, but that that's where it comes down to me. I think center wise, yeah, I can I'll I'll give the blues the center edge, but um I think that's where the Canucks wingers, the Millers, the Pearsons, the Bessers, and I I for Tannen, who I think has to be an X factor in this series, uh, against that blues defense, which underlines numbers or not, Jay Bowmeister or not, it's still a real quality defense. I think whoever wins that matchup can win the series. Well, that and whether or not the the Lotto line can uh, produce at five on five. Yeah, that uh, they, Pedersen needs to be. I agree with you. Pedersen needs to to be better, and he's going to be in a real tough matchup with Ryan O'Reilly. Um, but you, you're going to need that X those X factors to come through here. Um, talent for talent, I don't know who's the more talented team. I mean. We're going to see Tarasenko in this series, but where is Tarasenko? He played 10 games this year. Um, is he fully healthy? I mean, it is a new wrinkle for the St. Louis Blues, but where is he really going to be, I think, is an interesting question. I, I, I would have him as an X factor in St. Louis. He better be an X factor if they're going to if they're going to succeed. Uh, mm-hmm. Having that time off uh, from his injury and then COVID, uh, with, having COVID there was a massive... Um, check mark beside his name in my mind. I think that he he can take over games if he wants to. Uh, it's just whether or not he's yeah. He, health is everything there. So uh, yeah, you you would as a as a fan of the, I'm, I'm gonna be watching the series very intently, not just because I'm on this podcast, but because I know it's gonna be a hell of a fucking series. And I feel like it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna go seven games in my mind. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be. It's gonna be six or seven for sure. So uh, it's gonna be a long series, and it's gonna be hard fought. And uh, if I mean, you saw it in the Jets. You know, if you lose your one of your top guys, there's good potential that you're not gonna win that series. Yeah, as as kind of the the, the quote unquote outsider uh, in this series, uh, not having it so much of a stake in either in either one. Like, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be um, fun fun to watch and, and see who because I can see the advantages and disadvantages of both teams so yeah just, I don't know about game seven games but that would be that would be wonderful that'd be stressful 
I mean, it'll be stressful having someone in the house. So it's a little bit stressed out about it. But for me, I'll, I'll well, like it. Imagine if both of these series go seven games. Oh, yeah. Which is, I, I think, realistic, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. That'll be, that'll be just, just, just wonderful for <laughs> over here. 